Tov, Natchil Ba Hoshea, Perak Hamesh, Perak Hey. Shim U. Listen, listen to this. Kohanim, Hakshivu. Listen, pay attention. Beit Yisrael, and also Beit Hamelech, Haazinu. Listen, right? He's really trying to get them to listen. You have three words. Shim U, Hakshivu, Haazinu. Shimu, listen and obey. Hakshivu, pay attention. Ha'azinu, give ear. Why? Lachem ha'mishpat. To you is the judgment. Ki pach ha'item. So pach, I think we have never done. Pach is a trap, nair. A mizmor samech tet. Esrim b'shalosh. Vayihi. Shulchan. You know shulchan. And their table before them, yeah, in their like face, in their right? Face, yeah. And it's a pach. Their table is a snare to them. And what is the second part? Their shalom, peace, their well-being, is a mokesh. So a mokesh is also a snare or a trap. So they, they're they qu- quite often used in parallel, pach and mokesh. Ms. Mor Sadi Allah, Pasuk Shalosh, Yatzlicha, Yatzil. You know Yatzil, Lahatzil, Natsal, to save. He will save you from the snare of the one, the one who sets, the Yakush is the one who sets the Mokesh. Okay, he's the person who's setting the trap. He will save you, you know this verse, he will save you from the snare of the fowler. Well, what is a fowler? He's catching the birds, right? He's setting traps for birds. And what else? A dever thing? It's not. That would be a devar. Oh, yeah. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of devar words, aren't there? Mm-hmm. So it is a word. It means to speak. The basic meaning is words come out of your mouth. So devar can be a word. It can be a thing. A bee, devorah, right, is a bee. And what about the midbar? The wilderness. Why? That's where you hear things. Now there's also... Not used very often, but it, the devere is used occasionally. It refers to the Ark of the Covenant, and that's where the word is. But this devere actually is a plague, because when God speaks, different things can happen. He can create things, but he can also create things that are ill for you. If there's a plague, you will be ill. He will deliver you from the snare of the fallow, from the perilous pestilence, from the from the severe plague. This is pach. We're in Hosea 5.1. Because ki pach hayitem le mitzpah. You have been a snare to the, to the people of mitzpah. And also you have been a reshet. You know reshet? A net. Parusa. This is one of our spread out words. Parash. Parus. Parad. They're all spread out words. You have been a spread out net to Tavor. He is chiding them. Well, the whole book is full of chiding, isn't it? Two. It's a little bit hard to see the order of the things. The noun is the seitim. Okay, they are doing the action. And you can, you know, this this root. This is uh, related to satan. And the actual uh, root means to like whip back and forth. And the action of a snake may be trying to come around you and circle you up and okay to surround you all right so I think this is translated as a rebellious okay can you recognize the root of he'emiku well, so what is it the valley it's deep they're d- the thing that they're doing they're doing it very deeply causing it to be deep and what is the shecha so I think you know the the, uh, the the idea behind it is that the rebellious are causing a deep destruction is how it's translated they're deeply involved in slaughter. And then he says, Ani Musar Lechulam. So Musar has to do with correction. All right, so we'll st- it's a good word. We'll st- because it's also a turning word. He's trying to turn them back, the correction, trying to ter- turn them towards correction. So we're going to eat of. Hey, Hine, what is the man? Ashrei. Happy is the man, Yochechenu. He is correcting him. Who is correcting whom? Eloha, which is the singular of Elohim, is correcting the man, and that man is happy. Okay, you will be corrected by God. You will be ashrei, happy. 
And also, Shaddai is his Musar, his corrector also. <clears throat> if he does not, Tim'as. Have we done this, Ma'as? To reject. So the man who does not reject the correction of Shaddai, he is also happy. Of course, there's tons of Musar in Mishle. We'll start in Parak Aleph. Lada'at, to know, Chachma, wisdom, and also Musar. This is your correction. Lahevin, to understand, Imre, Bina. Sayings, words, words of understanding. Lahevin. Building up? Yes. It's a, it's a kind of, uh, because there's lots of wisdom and smartness and things. So you could have a lot of facts. And that's a certain kind of wisdom. But when you can put your facts together and make something out of it, building on your understanding, that's a different kind of wisdom. So you have it, lehavin, vina. It's the same root. The verb and the noun are the same. Lakachat, to take. Musar, here's your correction. Heskel, uh, which is also another kind of wisdom. Tzedek, you know? Aha, righteousness. Mishpat, judgment and mesharim. Yashar, 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 yashar. Straightness. Straightness. Uh, Mishle Dalid, Pasuk, Shalosh Esrei. So this is all about one of these female chachmas, or because it's referring to it in the feminine. Chazak, strong. Chazak, to grab hold of, to hold it strongly. This Muzar. Al, don't teref, let go of it. Nitzreha, what's the root of Nitzreha? Natsar. What is Natsar? The watchers. So in Israel, the Christians are called Nutzrim, but why? Because they because they know they're guarding. No. Why? Where was Yeshua from? Okay, Yeshua is from Nazareth. Nazareth sits in a place. It's a watch place, right? That you can see the whole valley of Megiddo from Nazareth in the valley of. Okay, where where are we? Four thirteen proverb. I'll watch over it. Why? Ki hi chayecha. She is your life. Wisdom is your life. All right, so in uh, Hosea 5.2, these rebellious people are <clears throat> deepening their slaughter. They're deeply involved in slaughter. They're making the slaughter deeper. <clears throat> and I, Ani, that would be God, is going to correct everybody. I'm the corrector for everybody. 5.3, Ani Yadati Ephraim. I know those guys. Look at the two dots above the resh on the Ephraim. You see? There should be two dots above that one. Just as there are. So those two dots are sort of like a comma. So we can see. So this is the first phrase, Aniya Dati Ephraim. And then the next phrase picks up, V'Yisrael Lo Nechachad. So to pronounce Nechachad, you have to make two chachas, because otherwise you can't hear the second one. Nechachad. Okay, and so this is a word that I think we have never done. I don't think I know it. Breshit Mem. Zion. Pasuk Shmona Esrei. This pronounces he. It's an alternative spelling to the yud. Who would have a vav, and he would have a yud, but sometimes they spell it. But it's hashana hahi, so it's got to match the shana. So that's actually givi yatenu. So the vav is a, uh, a consonant, and it's got a chirik under it. Givi yatenu. They're a uh, they're in the famine in Egypt, and now the people have, they've run out of bread, and they've given their money, and they've given their yeah. uh, animals, and we know what's going to happen, so they can continue to get the bread in the storehouses, they're going to give, they're going to sell themselves into slavery. So the Adoni is Joseph. They're talking to Joseph, negotiating their situation, all right? But the Ham Hashanah Hahi, and that year ended... And they came to him in the second year. They said to him, We will not hide. So we have a bunch of words for hiding, and we'll talk about those in a minute. We are not going to hide. Me Adoni. From my Lord. They address him as Adon. From my Lord. It's not Adonai. My Lord's I'm referring to God. Ki im tam hakesef. The money is complete or finished. It's the end of the money, and also it's the end of the mikne habehema, the animals, the ca- animals of the cattle. El adoni. Where did they all go? They went to him. 
my Lord has those things, right? My Lord has the mikne. Lo nishar. Remember nishar? Nothing remains. Uh huh. Lifne adoni before the face of my Lord. Bilti is one of those without, except for. Except for, this is what we have. Givia, our bodies, and our adama. This is what we have left, our land. We have our bodies and our land. So it's a very interesting situation because, yes, they're starving. So it's a tough situation because they're, they're going to starve. They're going to sell themselves into slavery to eat. Can you imagine yourself doing that? Right. Will you let them put that little chip in your hand? Yehoshua, Zion. Pasuk Sha Esre. So who is Joshua talking to? And what did he do? He hid the goodly Babylonian room. By Yom Yeshua al Achan Bini. He's so nice. He approaches him patriarchally. Sim na kavod le Yahweh. Give glory to God. That's right. Elohe Yisrael. Viten lo toda. Give him <laughs> thanks. I mean, I, you could just imagine. You catch your kid with the hand in the, in the cookie jar and you say, give glory to God. You got a cookie in your hand, haven't you? And you don't feel much like, when you're caught in your sin, you don't feel much like giving glory to God. But we know that he is going to do it, right? The uh, Hagedna, Lee, tell, please tell me, Me'asita, what you did. Al tichached mimen. Don't hide it from me. Okay, one more. Um, nice one, Mizmor Kuf Lamid Tet Pasuk Chamesh Lo Nichachid. They are not hidden. It's a Nifal. What? That's me. Myself. Could be. Right? It's not Atzmotai. It's not my bones. Okay, Mimcha is not hidden from you. Asher Useti. What is that? Yes, yeah, as I was made. Right? He's talking about that he was made. Okay. So it's a pu'al. Usually we don't see ose in pl. We see it in pa'al. Uh, but this appears to be a pu'al. So it is a um, passive, a passive form. I was made beseter. So seter is also a hiding. That's another word for hiding. I was made in a secret place. And rukamti. It's not. It could be uh, weaving. It could. It, sometimes it's embroidering. Embroidering. Isn't that nice? You are, uh, all right, what's tach, tachtiyot, the tachat, the lowest parts of the earth. It's translated as, I was skillfully wrong. But being embroidered, I think, is much nicer. You're embroidered together. Knit. All right. That, that, has a, um, that, ha- that has a truer meaning than skillfully wrought. It makes you think of the tabernacle, because there's a lot of embroidery in the tabernacle. And you are the tabernacle. All right, so we have this seter, which is uh, the secret. It's a secret place. But also, several places, it says, don't hide your face from me, or I will hide my face. And that is, um, hester, aster, uh, God says, I will hide my face. So this is also a hiding. It's Esther's name, right? Because right? Esther, many there are many hidden things about Esther. There's another word for hiding also. Who can remember in Genesis? I was naked and I hid myself. Do you remember that one? Chabe. <laughs> Chabe is also hiding. So we have these three ideas of hiding. Well, hide and seek. Did you know that I knew that? I just happened to know it. Hide and seek in Hebrew is called machbuim. So if you watch all those kids shows. Like that. But ever helps. All right, we're still in Hosea 5.3. We got up to the do not, it is not hidden. I know Ephraim. Israel is not hidden from me. God knows everything. Ki ata, here's your zona again. Yeah. Ephraim is still whoring around. And so what happens to Israel? Nitma, tame, made unclean, defiled. It's also in the, um, in the nephal. Israel is made unclean. Moving along, Hosea 5.4. So here's this Natan. It's very, very flexible in the way that it's translated. It means to set something or to do something more than just to give. You remember the Ma'alalim we had them before? It has to do with deeds. They didn't, they didn't set their actions to shuv, to return to their God. Why? 
because of the Ruach of Znunim, spirit of whoredom, Bukirbaum, is in their midst, in their inside. And so what, what part of the sentence is Yahweh in this last phrase? It's the object. They did not know him. It's not they didn't, they're refusing to know him. They don't, they're in the spirit of whoredom. They just want to do what they want to do. They're not interested in turning around and coming back. Okay? That was very good. We knew all the words. Well, we're supposed to know all the words. All right, 5-5. Five, five. Anna. Answer. Okay? But I think maybe we don't know Ga'on. Pride. Well, right. It's a title of a wise man also. It has to do with being lifted up. Well, but it, it became a title. The Ga'on of Vilna is somebody who's very famous for having been a wise rabbi. Vilna is in, is in Poland. Yes, I knew that. I was going. Pride of Israel uh, is, is uh, answering to his face. Whose face? Who's, who, who's, who's getting this prideful answer? Uh, Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh, right. Israel is proud, and they're the, that's what they're expressing to God. And it's not going well. And Israel and Ephraim, you remember Kashal? Stumbling. Uh, they're stumbling ba'avonam in their avon, in their evil, in their iniquity. <clears throat> and who else is stumbling? With them. And Judah is stumbling with them. There's just this con- constant influence. It's very hard to keep yourself separate well, and so holy. Ephraim should not be leading Judah in any way. <laughs> but when your neighbors start to do things, then you start you to do things. Six, five, six. So, remember its own flocks, sheep flocks? And what's the next one? Huh? Herds or cattle. What's the root? Bakar. 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 So he's talking about with their sheep, flocks, and with their cattle, Yelchu Levachesh at Yahweh. They're going to seek God. But God is the, below Yimtsa'u. They will not find because he is going to chalat them. So we don't have chalat. So we have a lot of verses for chalat. We'll see how many we do. We will start in Vayikra, Yudalad, Pasuk Arbaim. Arbaim. What is a chalutz? So the chalutzim were the pioneers who went to Israel early on and they slew the mosquitoes, drained the swamp. Right, they were the first swamp drainers. It, it was it was very difficult in the beginning. A lot of what do you get from uh, mosquitoes? Malaria. Malaria. Malaria was very bad. People had to leave because of it. Okay. So we're talking about when you have leprosy in your house, right? It's a, it's considered to be a plague in the house, and you have to take the the stones down and throw them away. Okay. <clears throat> so what is it? Tzivah Kohen, and the priest will command v'chiltsu et ha'avenim. They will take them away. What are they taking away? Stones. Good. And what are they going to do with them? Asher bahen, in other words, the stones that are in the, the plague place. Bah, no, bahen is in the stones, and what is in the stones is the naga, is the plague, right? What is the original root meaning of naga? To touch. To touch. See, it's like the dever. Mm-hmm. It's like the word can be all these things, but the word can be a plague. Naga can be all kind of things of touching, but if some if God touches you in a certain way, then you have the, a plague. So a similar idea. Hishlichu etan, toss them out. Michutz la'ir, outside the city, el makom tameh, to an unclean place. So I think how that comes to be chalutz pioneer is that the chalutzim were separated from the main body of the people to go ahead of them and do the, um, the swamp clearing. That's very funny. I never thought of that, but that's absolutely what happened. They drained it. So we'll go to Bamidbar, Lamid Aleph, Pasuk Chamesh. Yimasru, <coughs> Masar. They turned, uh, they were turning them aside in a way. Me Alfe Yisrael, from the thousands of, Elef is a thousand, Alfe, it's in Smichut, the thousands of Israel. Elef Lemate, Elef, a thousand for each tribe. And then it tells you, Shnei Masar Elef, 12,000 chalutzes of the tzava. So they're separated out from all the rest of the tribes to be the army. They're the ones that are going to go do the fight. Mizmor Yudchet, Pasuk 
Sha Esrei. Yoti. Hoti. Moti Lechem in Haaretz. What is it? To bring me. He brought me to a Merchav. You know Rachav? A wide place. He brought me to a broad place, a wide place. Yechaltseni. He separated me. He delivered me. Ki chafetzbi. He delighted in me. That's right. He found me to be something desirable. God knows why. Mishle Yud Aleph. Mishle Yud Aleph Pasuk Shmone. Tzadik is the righteous one. Mitzara from his tsar. His trouble from his place of pressure. Nechalat, what binyan is it? Nifal. Okay, he is saved. He is separated out from that place. He's saved from it. Vyavo, Russia. Russia. Russia, Ra. Wicked. 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 The wicked one, Tachtav. So, what does Tachat mean exactly? It means under, it also means instead. <coughs> in his place, right? See, in uh, Genesis 22, where Abraham gets the ayil, he gets the ram, and he sacrifices it, tachat Yitzchak, instead of Yitzchak. So then they made up a story that, you know, they were both burning together, oh. one under the other. The other tachat is, you see, when they come to Mount Sinai, and they come tachat hahar. So what the rabbis say is the mountain lifted up into the air and made a chuppah for the wedding. Okay, so the messianics and the Jews, everybody, you know, they learn these tricks from each other. So what is it here? Yavo resha tachtav. What is coming? Sarah will come to the wicked. The trouble will come to the rasha instead of to the tzaddik. All right, one more. Yishayahu kaf. Hasuk Shtayim. Be'etahi. In that time, Diber Yahweh, right, Be'yad Yishayahu ben Amot. So is he speaking in his hand, or what does that mean? No. Through. He's speaking through him. Lay more. And he's going to give him this instruction, okay? Lech. Go. Patach. Open. Hasak. So what is sack? It's a sackcloth. Okay, it's sackcloth. And so sack uh, is a um, it is a cognate. It's completely a cognate. When you go to Israel, if you buy something in a the store, they ask you if you want a sakit, or if you just want to take it with you, or do you want a small bag, a sakit, a little one. Okay. Me'al So do you remember we had this motnayim? Motnayim part of your body. Uh, it's your uh, waist area. Take the sackcloth off your loins. Loins is the word, right? And na'alecha. Na'alcha. What is that? Your shoe. Your shoe. Here's your tachalat, your chalat, which doesn't have to be, you know. Separate me'al raglayim from your feet. V'ya'asken. And he did that. And so now, haloch, holech, He's walking around, Arom, naked. naked, and also Yechef, barefoot. barefoot. Do you remember the dance? All right, so he's walking around, barefoot and naked. All right, so Chalat has this idea of separating from. He's separating his shoes from his feet, all those other things that we just read, okay, to put apart, to separate, to draw, to take the men away from the other men because they're going to be the army people. So now we're in 5-7. All right, it's a little bit obscure. Maybe we could figure it out. So what is the root there of bagadu? Beged. And what is beged? Clothes. It's a verb. And as a verb, it means to deceive. In other words, you clothe yourself in something other than what you're really talking about or what you're doing. You cover up. They have covered themselves up. They have deceived. They've deceived Yahweh. Can you deceive Yahweh? No. But they, that's what they're trying to do. Why? Ki banim, sons zarim, strangers. Okay, they are strangers. Yaladu, they yeladed them. They begat. That's right, they have begotten strange children. Ata, now, good. Yochlem, they will be eating something. Chodesh, so this is variously translated. This will be interesting. To, this is Chodesh. What is Chodesh? Rosh Chodesh. The moon. Or the period of a moon, a month, et 
Chelkehem. Chelek is their portion. So it seems like either they're going to be eaten up in a short time or, uh, or something to do with the new moon where the sacrifice isn't right or something like that. Something in, in the short time, in the course of a month or something, they're going to be devoured up with their portion, whatever. So because, why? They have born because strange children. What is, this, what is this idea of strange children? They're not raising their children in Torah. Yeah. Yes. This is, uh, this is when you see Avodah Zarah. And it's actually from the idea of service, from serving God. And it comes when they bring the uh, fire, the strange fire. Right, those two guys, they got, uh, <coughs> they got fired up afterwards. The two elder sons of Aaron. 5H, Tiku, Teka, Teka Shofar, what is it? Psalm 150, to make a sound, okay? When we do the sounds, Tekia, right. When we do the sounds uh, at um, Yom Trua, there's a Tekia, the Shavarim, and the Teruah. Okay, we have two of these in here. So teka shofar is a sound. It's one of the sounds of the shofar. Sound the shofar in giva, in gibeya, or it could be on the height. And what's a chatzotzra? It's, you know? it's a trumpet. Oh yes, of course. Yes. The trumpet player remember, knows. Remember, it's a. It's parallel. We're also going to sound the trumpet in Rama, which is also a high place. Here's your hariu. That's from Teruwa. To make another noise, another trumpeting that loud noise, or just even just a loud noise. Where in Bet Aven, we talked about Bet Aven before. Acharecha, after you're behind you, O Benjamin. Uh, five nine. Yeah, it's hard because it's got a shva under the ayin. You're just going to say hodati. Just make one little thing in your throat. Hoda. Ephraim. What's going to happen to Ephraim? Okay. So uh, we have talked about this root. The Dagish and the Mem gives you a little hint about it. The root is Shomem. Do you remember it? Destruction. That's one of the destroy words. That's right. Didn't we recently do a bunch of Shin Mem yeah. words? Was that in this class? Yeah. So this is, the, the root goes back to um, yeah. the, breathing. Like the breathing. Okay, it goes back yeah. to breathing. Yeah. All right. So Nasham, Lin Shom is to breathe. In the movie, he kept calling her, both they call each other Nishama. But it's more like sweetheart. They call each other, that's a name like sweetie or honey, nishama, like my breath, like my soul. Sometimes it's translated soul, okay? Shum is a garlic, remember? It like consumes you and it's certainly in your breath, right? <laughs> so this root shamem for destruction is like when the thing is so devastated it takes your breath away. You're like, <gasps> so Ephraim is going to this devastation. To he, it will be, okay? Ephraim will be to devastation, destruction. Beyom, in the day of Tochecha, we're going to talk about Tochecha, uh, which means uh, reproach or punishment. Uh, so let's do that, Tochecha. Malachim Bet, Malachim Bet, Yudtet, Hasuk Shalosh, Beyomru Elah. They said to him, Ko Amar Chizkiah. This is what, he, what Hezekiah has said. Yom Tzara, this is the same Tzara, day of trouble. And Tochecha, reproach, re, rebuke, blasphemy, Una'atza, is blasphemy, I'm sorry. Hayom Hazeh, is this day. Why? Ki Ba'u, they brought or what? They came? Who? The sons, Ad Mashbeer, until... Uh, to give birth. They're, they're ready to, uh, the children are ready to be born. Okay? The children are ready to be born. They're breaking yes, open when a baby is I born. Yeah. That's that's right? The koach ayin. Strength. Ayin. Ain. There ain't any. Le leida. For the giving birth. Day of rebuke and blasphemy. Because the children are about ready to be born, but there's no strength for it. Okay, Ms. Moore. Ayin Gimel, Pasuk Arba Esre. The uh, Ehi is Ehye, but it's in Vav Conversive. So how are you going to read it? I was. I was. Right? Ehye is the imperfect. You converse of it. Labriut. <coughs> because they do that in those conversives all the time. Vayehi. It's always. And it was. It's not Vayehiye. It's always Vayehi. Right? Vyar. And he saw. 
Viyas, we had it, Viyas, and he did. Because the he drops in the vav conversive, in the imperfect, in the singular, all the singular person. Okay, well, it's not in modern Hebrew. Okay, oh, Nagua, you remember Nagua, Nega? The a plague. The plague of touching, that's right. Mm-hmm. Kol Hayom. Okay, and Vitochachti, and I am rebuked, I am reproached, I am chastened. Every morning and every boker. All right, Mishle Gimel. Pasuk Achat Esrei. As you can imagine, there's a great deal in the Proverbs about tocheach because it's about re- reproaching and rebuking and correcting. You remember Musar we've had a few times? Correction. It's, it comes from the idea of turning, turning the person to the right direction. The uh, correction of Yahweh, B'ni, Al tim as. We talked about mas a little bit uh, to reject. Don't reject the construction, the correction. Okay. Va'al takots. So well, we haven't had that kots, the kits. Don't put an end to, right? The idea. Don't put an end to his correction, his tocheach. Okay. Let's see. We do one more. Also mishle. Kaf zayin. Pasuk tova. It is good. Tochachat is your correction. Migula. What is this? Gala. What? To roll away the rock and see what's underneath. Open. It's translated right as open. Rebuke is is good. Me'ahava. So that's the comparison. It's better than love. Misutar. We looked. We looked at this satar last week. Hidden. Secret, hidden. Okay. An open rebuke is better than secret love. What do you, you know where you stand? That's back to Hosea 5 9. Ephraim is going to destruction. It will be destruction in the day of rebuke and correction. You bet. Because they're in a lot of trouble. God's going to give them some punishment about it. Beshivte, what is Shevet? The tribes of Israel. Hodati. What is that? Oh, get out of herb sheet! Yay! Okay, we won't uh, we won't have time to do a very nice job, but we can at least become familiar with what it is. So the root is what is the root? Yada. Yada with an iron. What do you make of the binyan? What do you think? He feel. He feel. He feel. So what happens in the present tense in the uh, participle tense of he feel verbs? Mem. Mo. It's because of the yod. Modati. I'm making an announcement. Whoops. <laughs> Mo. It's Modia. I, stop. You guys are confusing me. Where's the eraser? Now I've lost the eraser. Modia. 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 See, that looks good. That looks like a he feel. Participle. Mem. Mem. We got the mem. That's the only thing we got going on. Mem. Okay, participle. Modia. I'm making an announcement. I'm causing oh, it. Okay. Yes, I'm causing it to be known, right? <laughs> I'm causing it to be known, Modia. Remember, the feminine is always uh, ends in ah and never goes to the et or the at or anything. It just becomes Modia. To make an announcement. Kol hoda'a. Every announcement. Okay, Modi'im and Modiot. You can figure those by yourself. I am making an announcement as it is. I made an announcement. As in Hosea 5 9, Hodati. Okay, so you should fill this in at home because we're not going to get to finish it here. Hodati, and you know, right? Hodata, Hodat, etc. And uh, the he form will be Hodia, Hodia, third person, and then Hodia, Hodanu, Hodatem, Hodiu. Hodiu is highly recommend that you go finish this out from your 501 book, okay? The future tense, what happens? <coughs> we lose a yud, we use la hey, everything, odia, todia, todii, yodia, he will make an announcement. Nodia, we will make an announcement. Todinu, todiu, todiu, yodiu, they will make an announcement. Infinitive is lehodia. So what kind of announcement is he making here? 
God is making the announcement. Your toast, Ephraim. It's Ne'emana. What is Ne'eman? Ne'eman. Something about Amen, right? <laughs> it's faithful. He's announcing it faithfully, truthfully. This is, this is what's going to happen. The announcement is <clears throat> your toast. That is the announcement. I don't know. You know how to say toast in Hebrew? How do we say toast? In Hebrew? Toast. <laughs> uh, usually, when they uh, transliterate words, they use tet above tav. And they use uh, kuf above kaf, and samech above sin. Like what? Coca Cola. Coca Cola. You got to get the O's just right. All right. Come back next week.